And this is where Britain's top commentators speak out on controversial issues without the fear of the cancel culture sweeping the rest of the media. Now, some of the most cancelled people in the UK by the mainstream media are those impacted by damage or death from the COVID-19 vaccine. But not on this show. While the MSM doggedly continues to ignore the topic, I spoke to brave Conservative MP Sir Christopher Choke recently, who's fighting for the government to guarantee proper support for victims of serious COVID jab side effects. Well, questions I ask, they seem to be tremendous resistance from the government to recognise that there will be the need to compensate people who have done the right thing but have suffered as a result. Now, the Department of Health stands by the fact that its benefits far outweigh any risk for most people, but some people, like my next guest, know all too well about the devastation of what they believe to be vaccine damage. Glasgow scaffolder Alex Mitchell had his first AstraZeneca jab on the 20th of March 2021 and around 12 days later experienced a sore arm, tiredness and sore calves. The pain continued and on the 4th of April he collapsed at home. Alex was taken to hospital where a CT scan confirmed multiple blood clots in his lower abdomen and in both legs. He was rushed into theatre where surgeons removed them, but sadly amputation was the only option and he lost one of his legs. A tradesman losing a limb has turned his whole life upside down, but despicably he still hasn't received compensation for what he's been through. And Alex Mitchell joins me now. Alex, look, it's incredibly important we talk about vaccine damage you are one of those people impacted, and obviously it's changed your whole life. Talk to me about what you've been through this past year. Um, if I'm being honest, it's everything you can imagine. It could be, and more. It's the most horrific thing you could ever experience. You, one minute you're healthy, fit hard-working human being, and within 12 hours, your life has disappeared. Everything in your world has changed. Nothing is the same anymore. It's been the hardest thing I've ever done, and it's not getting any easier, to be honest with you, Dan. We can't get any better because we can't get help. You know, it's terrific. I know. I, I, I can only imagine how difficult it is. So there's so much to unpick about what is going on, Alex. And I guess the well, first thing to talk about is the fact that you still haven't been compensated for what you've gone through. No. The, no one has been compensated, Dan. There was, I, I quoted 920 claims to the vaccine damage payment scheme on the 28th of February. That number is now 1,200, over 1,200 claims. This is nearly 50 people a week that's registered as 50 to 60% disabled or more making a claim. What about all the ones that can't make the claim because they're not 60% disabled? They've not helped any one family in two years. Now, there's people lost their lives. I can, claim, I can know 78 VIP families have lost a loved one. The death certificates, lots of them have now got death certificates saying it's only caused by an AstraZeneca vaccine. Mm. And they're still not paying these people out. Now, I'm going to update you. I received a letter today at quarter to six. Oh, really? From the vaccine damage payment mm -hmm. saying that they've received all my medical records. They won't need any more. They're now setting up a team of medical assessors because they've just issued a contract. But they can't, they're not in place yet. They can't give us a time scale of when it's in place. But when it's in place, it could take a further three months. Now, the contract is a five-year contract with a two-year extension. Does that mean we have got another seven and a half years to wait? Well, indeed. And, I mean, Alex, obviously losing your leg is devastating, but you lost your business as well. You I lost, lost everything. Yeah. I lost my passion. That scooter that you see me on, that my beloved scooter, I lost that. I, I sold her because I didn't think I could go there again. No. And then two days later, I regretted it. 
Mm-hmm. And I bought another one. <laughs> Bless so you. in a couple of weeks' time, I'll get my new old 1970s Vespa GTR back. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to it. It's one of the few pleasures that's left at the moment, shall we say. Indeed. And look, you've got to try and hang on to those things, Alex. But my heart breaks for you. And I just wonder how angry you feel at the complete lack of interest in stories like yours from the vast majority of the mainstream media in this country, but also, Alex, from the political class in this country. I'm not sure if you're aware of the clip, but when Sir Christopher Chope, who has spoken about his vaccine damages bill bill on this show, when he raised it in Parliament, he was shut down by the Speaker of the House as if he was some sort of naughty schoolboy. I can only imagine that you feel ignored and overlooked. I think this is the biggest problem that we're facing. We can't deal with getting our health back, trying to get fitness to move forward because we're being ignored, denied. And that trauma, that's really adding to some of the grief. We've lost three people to suicide recently over the last few months. We couldn't take any more because they've been gaslighted by their doctors, by politicians. And... I'll be honest with you, Dan. I'll be damned if I'm going to allow any more. In fact, I'll do whatever I can. We can't, we can't lose any more people. This has to stop. So what's your plan, Alex? What's your plan? You obviously want to raise awareness, quite rightly, and we're behind you with that. It's to raise awareness of the fact that it's every step that's blocking people from getting help. You know, if we take it from the medical doctors, these people took an oath or do no harm and informed consent. And that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. You know, this, the, we know that the figures are out there. Everyone can see them. Nobody's making these up anymore. You know, we've, we've not been plucking figures out of there. These are figures, the official government figures we're quoting. And it's as if, I don't know what's happened. When did, when did we stop caring about people's lives? Well, I you think, know, Alex, I, because people aren't hearing from folk like you. So so yeah. we've obviously heard from people who lost relatives to COVID, but we're not hearing from people who lost relatives from the vaccine, apart from on Mark Stein show and, of course, uh, on GB News too. But look, Alex Mitchell, so powerful, such an incredible story. We will stay in touch with you uh, as you go on and, and fight quite rightly for compensation after losing your leg as a result of the AstraZeneca jab. Now, we have reached out to AstraZeneca and surprise, surprise, just like Mark Stein, we've received no comment. But Lindsay Sutherland, Interim General Manager for Lanarkshire's vaccination programme, says, we are sorry to hear of the medical problems that Mr Mitchell has had, but unfortunately we are unable to comment on individual patients due to confidentiality. As per the advice issued by the Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation, the coronavirus vaccine can prevent people from getting seriously ill or dying from coronavirus. The benefits of being vaccinated outweigh the risks and any side effects need to be continuously balanced against the expected benefits in preventing illness. The vaccine has saved thousands of lives and played a critical role in controlling the virus. We continue to urge anyone invited to come forward for their vaccine. 